Today, the world celebrates. It celebrates an ongoing effort, a universal agreement that was able to engage all nations of the world, the Montreal Protocol. 25 years ago, governments united to tackle an invisible environmental problem, the depletion of the ozone layer. Today, from east to west, the world commemorates this global call for action. A call to save our natural shield against the harmful ultraviolet rays that had put us all, animals, plants, and human beings, at risk. This is the story of the Montreal Protocol. When scientists broke the news of ozone depletion, most of the world didn't believe them. There was a common knowledge with regard to the ozone layer. And that common knowledge was that the ozone layer was uh, in perfect uh, conditions. Back in the 70s, scientists found out that man-made substances were responsible for ozone depletion. Certain chemicals, such as CFCs used in the air conditioning, refrigeration and foam sectors, were reacting with the ozone molecules once vented into the atmosphere and slowly depleting the ozone layer. If we had continued to let chlorofluorocarbons increase in our atmosphere, the world that we would have gotten to would not have been a very good place to live in. The scientific evidence laid out terrible prospects ahead. Unprotected by a damaged ozone layer, exposure to the sun could gravely raise the incidence of skin cancers, eye cataracts, as well as diseases due to the weakening of our immune systems. The impacts on crops could affect production outputs with skyrocketing prices of commodities. Natural ecosystems would also suffer. The birds in the sky, the fish in the sea. Ultraviolet rays inhibit the growth of plankton, affecting the food supply chain of thousands of ocean species. At first, the denial of the early scientific findings delayed the action of the international community. A decade later, Another surprising discovery made this reality difficult to ignore. Year after year, the ozone concentration in the stratosphere over Antarctica was reaching lower and lower levels, what came to be known as the ozone hole. In retrospect, that was a really good thing to call it, because an ozone hole must be bad. The hole had to be filled in. It was difficult to turn the foreseen nightmare around but an instrumented global action to protect the ozone layer was possible due to its scientific basis and strong political will. The dream of gathering the international community to tackle the problem with a lot of work and effort could then become a reality. In 1985, 24 nations signed the Vienna Convention, agreeing on a more effective cooperation on legal, technical and scientific issues required for the protection of the ozone layer. This paved the way to the signing of the Montreal Protocol in 1987, a treaty that agreed to set strict schedules by which the production and consumption of ozone-depleting substances such as CFCs would be gradually phased out. Governments of the world agreed on the minimum targets which they were strengthening throughout the years based on sound science, based on the state-of-the-art development of technologies, and based on the goodwill of the governments. Montreal Protocol has been a matter of start and strength. Uh, in the beginning, there may have been just one gas and 50% reduction. And then you add it on with more knowledge, with more science, the other gases, the other substances. The solution to the problem was heavily dependent on developing alternatives to ozone-depleting chemicals used in various applications. Within the framework of the Montreal Protocol, negotiations engaged industry representatives, economic specialists and technology developers in discussing the future prospects for ozone-friendly alternatives. Well, at the beginning, because of the very, very cross-cutting use of these substances, uh, we were a little bit uh, uh, worried. We set clear goals. Um, those goals helped stimulate innovation and technology development by creating a market for ozone-friendly technology. 
political will and trust between governments, backed by science and technology, had set the protection of the ozone layer in motion. Once ozone-friendly alternatives were available, the world united once more and came up with a unique model of funding and technical assistance to ensure compliance to the ozone-depleting substance phase-out targets among the Montreal Protocol community. The establishment of the multilateral fund set the basis for an effective delivery of technical and financial assistance. The fund has generated a wealth of international cooperation, both through its partnerships with developed and developing countries, through South-South cooperation, it has stimulated industry to both develop and market alternatives, I believe much faster than might have been without the Montreal Protocol and the Multilateral Fund. The Multilateral Fund financially backs the implementation of projects by sharing resources among 148 countries worldwide. This has been uh, uh, very, very effective uh, because we have linked uh, uh, compliance uh, with uh, uh, the uh, financial assistance. Implementing agencies and bilaterals carry the mandate to apply the Montreal Protocol model for the protection of the ozone layer across the globe. At first, the protocol strengthens local capacities through the establishment of national ozone units. This has enabled governments to lead initiatives and tackle the ozone-related problems locally. The implementing agencies have really played a critical role over the years, without a doubt. They have been uh, the connection between the multilateral fund um, and more than 100 countries to disseminate technology, uh, to overcome barriers on standards, uh, on commercialization, and to get the technologies out in the field. Altamente considerable la capacitación que han, que han recibido en temas técnicos y en, y en temas de gestión. O sea, realmente por intermedio de la acción se ha dado un fortalecimiento de las instituciones de los países en, en desarrollo. The assistance provided to member countries relies on information exchange, upgrading the national knowledge base. It allows targeted awareness raising among business and civil society. Technology transfer, industrial conversion, and capacity building such as training of customs officers and refrigeration technicians are also part of the package. Implementing agencies and countries work closely together to find common ground when applying international solutions to national realities. After 25 years, the Montreal Protocol has delivered over $2.8 billion in assistance for the implementation of almost 7,000 projects. This has been instrumental to the global compliance to the ozone depleting substance phase-out targets, as every country has been sharing common but differentiated responsibilities towards this goal. E vou ressaltar aqui uma característica muito especial do Protocolo de Montreal, porque se é possível ter os resultados que nós tivemos no Brasil e estamos tendo em outros países do mundo, é porque esse protocolo também envolveu diretamente a sociedade e o setor produtivo. Ha demostrado que se puede hacer, que se puede hacer económicamente, que las industrias o la agricultura no cierra masivamente, que, que más bien pueden aprender a rebajar costos, pueden aprender a, a gerenciar mejor el manejo de los insumos y eso los torna en ecocompetitivos. Industries, research institutes like ministries, consumers have contributed immensely to the ODS phase out program of the Montreal Protocol. In the field, the Montreal Protocol has brought significant impacts on developing countries at local and regional levels. The benefits uh, from the Montreal Protocol to, to the Mexican people and the Mexican industry has been not only the technology transfer, the technology improvement, also the um, better employments, for example, uh, and, uh, gender issues as well, uh, better employments for, for women in certain sectors. We have uh, implemented uh, 18 sector plans and uh, phased out over 200,000 tons of ODS. Most of other countries, they just import its products from China. So if China's improvement also can help other countries improve. While the Montreal Protocol evolved, history paid tribute to science. In 1985, the scientific discovery that unveiled the ozone threat was awarded with the Nobel Prize. Throughout the past 25 years, 
the Montreal Protocol achievements have unfolded into unforeseen benefits to the world. Many substances that deplete the ozone layer also have a high global warming potential. As these were gradually being replaced, the Montreal Protocol has avoided the emission of billions of tons of equivalent greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. We already know today that we have saved also over 25 billion CO2 equivalent gases under the Montreal Protocol by virtue of the actions that were taken and therefore having generated an extraordinary climate benefit over the last 15-20 years. And that is part, in a sense, of a win-win uh, track record of the Montreal Protocol. The efforts to recover the ozone layer have also prevented significant damage to ecosystems, livestock and materials. It saved millions of human beings from skin cancers and eye cataracts every year. Moreover, the protocol pushed for clean technology innovation, investing in industrial conversions, generating jobs and providing capacity building. The cross-sector benefits have been delivered, but some future challenges may hinder these positive impacts if not addressed on time. En plus de la destruction de la couche d'ozone, euh, les défis qui restent euh, sont nombreux parce qu'il faut associer maintenant les aspects climatiques et les aspects de l'énergie. In 2007, parties of the Montreal Protocol took an important decision to advance by 10 years the phase-out of hydrochlorofluorocarbons, or HCFCs. Thousands of tons of HCFCs are currently used in the refrigeration and foam industries. Although less harmful to the ozone layer than CFCs, these gases still deplete ozone and contribute to global warming, and so they too are being phased out under the Montreal Protocol. The most commonly used replacements for HCFCs are high global warming potential hydrofluorocarbons, or HFCs. HFCs don't harm the ozone layer, but many of them are extremely powerful greenhouse gases. Some are thousands of times more powerful than CO2. However, more environmentally preferable, low global warming and energy efficient alternatives are available, such as ammonia, carbon dioxide, hydrocarbons, water, and low global warming potential HFCs. In 2010, the Montreal Protocol has finally harvested the major results of decades of global efforts to save the ozone layer. The parties to the Montreal Protocol achieved their target of 100% phase-out of CFCs, right on schedule. There is only one single planet, and everyone has to go in the same direction. It is necessary that there is a confidence between the different parties involved in the making of the protocol. And the challenges that remain are numerous, and we are here to raise them. Today, the Montreal Protocol along with the Vienna Convention, is the only universally ratified environmental treaty. If countries keep meeting their commitments, the ozone layer is expected to be fully restored by mid-century. The Montreal Protocol has helped governments integrate the principle of sustainable development into their national policies, thus contributing to the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. The Montreal Protocol is a testimony of the power of the world united to address a global environmental challenge. We have a lot to celebrate today. It's the 25th anniversary of the Montreal Protocol. It is a protocol that should be extremely well known in the world because it is a success and it is a proof that when put together and if government want to, they indeed can solve an environment issue. That is a very great success and a very good message, I would say, for the generation coming. And it is a good message also for the other issues uh, that we have to tackle in the environment community, climate being the first one.
please take care of our environment. Protect the ozone. Yeah, give us a chance.